Hello. In this video, I want to share with you a very unique situation where augmented six chords are concerned. I, this video is kind of for your interest and information, and uh, we'll certainly talk about it in class, but it's not like this happens a great deal. It's more of a quirk of music history and uh, music theory, but it is worth observing because you may come across it, you may encounter it. Uh, from time to time, although it will be quite rare. It's a very unique situation. This only occurs when, first of all, you are in major, so this situation won't even occur if you're in minor. So you must, first of all, be in major, and secondly, you must be using a German augmented six chord, and thirdly, you have to be resolving that German augmented six chord to a one six four chord. All of those things have to be in place before this situation even comes up. So let me just run through those again. You have to be in major, you have to be using a German augmented six chord, not a French or Italian, a German augmented six chord, and you have to be wanting to resolve that to a one six four chord. In any other situation, if you're in minor, if you're using a French augmented six chord, whatever it might be, any other situation or combination, you won't even run into this problem. You run into the problem only when you are in C major, in C major, in major, it happens to be C major here, when you're in major, when you have a germinal mini six, but when you're going to one six four. And here's the problem. Everything works great from most of the chord. The augmented six interval moves out just like you would expect. The bottom note going down by a half step, the top note going up by a half step. No problems there, Not, no issues that we have to worry about. The, uh, C, the tonic, remains the same. We're going to a 1-6-4 chord. This is a C, E, G chord. No problem. Just retain the note. The problem, if it even is a problem, is in the E-flat in this case. The E-flat would have to move to an E-natural. And for good reason, it was felt that this was misleading to the eye that an E-flat going to an E-natural could easily be stumbled over if you were reading the music at speed. Whereas if you saw instead notes on different lines, kind of like you do naturally see here and here, you tend to want to move to a different note. If you see two notes on the same line, even if they are chromatically changed, there's a chance you're going to stumble over that a little bit in your playing, in your performing. And so, for various reasons, not least of which the performance reasons I just outlined, this is actually rewritten. The German augmented six chord has instead of an E flat, a D sharp, which can then move to an E without having to be marked natural. And visually, it looks more like it's going somewhere. I have not actually changed anything. I have just enharmonically spelled an E flat as a D-sharp, but in doing so I've created visually the look of something moving rather than something static on the same line and the movement being a result of changing the uh, chromatic, um, the, the accidental for the note. So this creates more of a sense of movement uh, to the eye. And so this was considered to be something that was important. But this is not a German augmented six chord. It has a D sharp in it, so it needed a new name. So I have heard it called either the doubly augmented six, because it has two augmented intervals in it, or I have heard it referred to as the English augmented six. I'm not sure if that was somebody just making it up or whether there's really actually some uh, some validity in that, it would, it would kind of make sense, we have the French, Italian and German, it would make sense we'd have the English as well. Uh, but either way, uh, this is the situation. It's when you, uh, you enharmonically change one of the notes of the German augmented six chord so that it appears to be leading more logically it to the one six four chord in the chord that you're heading to, the, the, the chord of, of resolution if you will from the German Old Menisix to the 164. It's a visual thing. 
there, you know, some people might say, oh, come on, that is just ridiculous. Why would you even bother to mess with that? It's, it's just silliness. But if it helps there to be a more effective performance, a quicker performance, then I think there's some validity in it. What we as composers and theorists should be doing things that help a, a performance occur um, more quickly and more accurately. And so if, if that is truly the reason behind it, then I, 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 see, I see the logic in doing it. Um, and we have to adjust as, as theorists and composers in order to accommodate the performer. And, and that's honestly how it should be because, let's face it, the music is about, uh, that music is about getting a performance and getting a good, accurate performance uh, rather than necessarily about just the dots on the page. They're a means to an end and not an end in themselves. So, the W augmented six or the English augmented six, that's what it is. Uh, an enharmonic respelling of one part of the German augmented six in order to create a, vi a more visually pleasing uh, progression from the augmented six chord to the one six four. Just something to uh, be aware of. Thank you.